Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast here at the Matchroom Gym today with Mr. Felix Cash. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Yourself? Good, yeah? Good, good, very good. Happy New Year, of course. Um, just want to talk about that spot that I watched between you and John Ryder, right? Because I said to you, you didn't pull any punches, did you? Fucking hell. You and John were going at it. <laughs> Listen, you've got to prepare properly in you for, uh, for fight night, so no one will be pulling no punches on fight night, so you go. to... Uh, you got you got to do what you got to do. I did hear you mention about sort of when you spiral, you get to know someone as well. Um, I can imagine the amount of rounds that you and John have done over the years. Um, sometimes is it can it be too much sparring someone because, like you said, you know him inside out. Like you must know every little faint movement that John does now. Yeah, you do. But then what happens is you uh, you don't span for a while, or uh, you know, and you span so many other different people, and then you go back to span, and then it's not as much. But if you start span them, you know twice a week and you're sparring week in week out then yeah you start cancelling each other out because obviously you know what you're doing but um, I inspired John for, for a couple of weeks now so uh, I think you're coming the right day <laughs> it's definitely an entertaining watch I say that um, obviously both of you preparing for the same date as well so you're sort of at that same um, same sort of stage let's talk about uh, your fight I think everyone was expecting that this year you would fight Signani immediately it would be next um, but it's not going to be next you're fighting someone who you said you're not going to try and pronounce his name, so I still don't know who it is. But I know that he's ranked in the WBA, so this is a meaningful fight for yourself. Yeah, he's ranked number three by the WBA. He's uh, he's Russian. He's unbeaten. Uh, you know, he's a good amateur. Um, he's a good opponent. He's a good opponent. Uh, you know, he's definitely no mug. Um, he's definitely going to be no pushover. But listen, it's, uh, to be the best, you're going to have to, you know, should be dealing with people like him and and doing beating him and uh, you know and looking good doing it. So. Um, like the Sigiani fight, you know, it's a bit frustrating because obviously I wanted the belt and I wanted to go down that route and, uh, you know, I was close before I fought for the British to fight for the European, but, uh, you know, obviously I went for the British because that's what I wanted. I wanted everyone obviously wants to win the British belt on it, so I've done that and then, you know, I was hoping to uh, to get the European, but um, I'm mandatory for the European now anyway, so um, God willing everything goes well in this fight and do a job on, uh, on, on, on the 12th of February and... Uh, then uh, get that get that fight afterwards. When I was speaking to Tony, he said to me, he was like, "Look, he said I believe Felix is world level." And I said to him, "I think a lot of people in this country believe that you're sort of at world level. Obviously, you've got the twelfth, and you still got to fight Signani. You're not just going to get given the title. But is it one of them where you just kind of want to pick it up, even if you are above European level? Just so you've said, look, I'm the British champion, Commonwealth, European. You've got the collection, and then you can sort of be satisfied with that with that stage of your career." Listen, I'm mandatory for the for for the belt now, and uh, listen, I'm not looking past the twelve first. I gotta get, you know, everything's gotta go well on the twelve first. Um, but you know, um, I'm full, I'm full confident that I will. So, you know, Signani next. But listen, you don't know if something else comes up, and a well, a better, a better fight comes up, and a better fight for me in my career, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd go, I'd, I'd, I'd move and 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 you know, bypass the European. But obviously, I'm mandatory for it, and if nothing else is there in the pipeline, and nothing. So it's significant that you know that that's gonna gonna you know be in, an interest for me. Then of course I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go and pick the try to pick the European up and fight Signani. Do you think people will expect quite a lot from you now? Because um, you know the, the big booking fans will have known you from the start of your career, but the ones you may have picked up on you recently, you've had fight of the year contender. Then you went over to a Queensbury show and um, blitzed Denzel Bentley out in what people are calling a 50-50 fight. Do you think it's one of them now? It's like when Felix steps in the ring, people are going, "I'm expecting something tonight." Yeah, I think I'm a set. I'm, a, I'm a, being a bit, a bit, you know, I'm exciting fighter anyway. You know, um, I, I'm quite all action, and uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm in really that much of a born fight. You know, I'm, I'm gonna. It's not gonna be one of them ones where I just try to pick my way through a fight. You know, and uh, get an easy win. I'm always gonna be trying to get him out there, and. Uh, you know, I've done like you said, I've done the job on Denzel Bentley. So listen, I want to, I want to make it. I made, a, I made a big statement there. I want to make another statement on the twelfth, and then another statement after that. So yeah, I think people are starting to, you know, look at me and think, you know, is he, is he one of the, is he the best middleweight in the country? Obviously, we've got uh, the middleweight fight of Chris Eubank and Liam Williams coming up. I know you've been vocal in saying um, you want the winner, but as sort of as we get nearer to the fight now, um, only two weeks away. Sort of one, how do you see it? And two, has your mind changed at all? Are you one of them people who, as it gets nearer, you're a bit like, oh, change your decision, or have you always thought the same as soon as it's been announced? To be honest with you, I couldn't give a fuck who wins who with who loses, to be honest with you. I've got, um, thanks, thanks. I really answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean, because I've obviously got to concentrate on my own fight. But um, 
Listen, it's a good fight, and um, listen, I'm, I ain't really talk too much about that to be honest with you. I'm there. Uh, listen, the fight's available after after I get um, this Russian out out of the way on the twelfth, and that fight's available. The winner of them two, then then um, then I'll then I'll have a think about them and who's next. Listen, it's uh, it's a good fight. It's a good fight for the fans. You know, they're both um, well known names, so obviously people are interested in the fight. Um, it's, it's one of them fights, fifty fifty fight. You know, I, I could see I could see a way for both of them winning. Do you reckon, uh, obviously, look, like you said, it's all sort of theoretic because we don't know what's going to happen, but do you reckon there could be an end of the year where I come down to the gym, we do a recap, and you're sitting there as a world champion? Is that a possibility this year? It's definitely a possibility, 100%. If everything goes right and and, and, and if I do what I'm meant to do and, and, and what I believe I can do, then, uh, you know, I definitely think I'll be a world champion.